Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, perfect. Hello. How is it going? Maybe next time we we can yeah. share this link up before. Yes, yes, I I'll share my screen. You you already recording this video? Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll record it, right? Yeah, good. Okay. That's fine. Do let me know when you can see my screen. Hi Kristen. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? It's going good, Yali. Oh good. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, yep. So I shared my screen. Um, yeah. So um, looking, uh, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. So, yep. So I just wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, since this is the kickoff meeting, like, um, what are the? I've written it down in the meeting, I guess. So um, I'll just go over some of the items, and um, if time permits, we could just go over the design of it. Huh. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. So uh, first of all, um, we would like to finalize the days and times of the two meetings with the mentors per week. So because Oleg said it's up to the team, um, according to them, uh, like how many days do they want to meet in a week? So mm -hmm. we could definitely, yeah, we could definitely adjust that. So what are your what are your preferences? I mean, do you want to have it twice a week, once a week? Um, please feel free to like pitch in. Um, I've, I think. Sometimes we see better success when we meet twice a week because I know that you know you'll be iterating over stuff really quickly, and it just gives mm -hmm. you a chance to ask like questions twice. So okay. you know you have, you know we can work on things and then you know you feel work at them. It's like an easier chance just to sync up in person. Um, okay. If that works for you, I I think okay. twice a week is good. I don't know, um, Rick. Or, is that, yeah, Rick. I, don't know, I don't know who's a, it's a CD foundation. <laughs> yeah, Rick, Rick's on the call, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know if that's... Yes. Yeah, I agree with uh, that we can have two, uh, two twice uh, uh, per week uh, mm -hmm. if, if we don't have too much things to discuss, we can short the meeting time, but it, exactly. it, it will, will be a good chance to Communicate, communication uh, case uh, frequently. Okay. So lessons. Okay. So uh, is, is everyone? Yep. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was like, and we can ha we don't have to have it at you know like the same time twice a week, so we can we can if we can move around times too. So that's okay. 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 Because we do uh, put I guess one fixed time on the I mean on the Jenkins calendar. So um, mm -hmm. would it be fine that if we select one? Fixed time and then the other one could be moved around. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, uh, well, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was thinking like it, it's you know they they don't have to be you know like uh, eight a.m. UTC Monday, eight a.m. UTC Thursday or something. It can be you know eight a.m. Monday UTC Monday or like you know three p.m. UTC Monday. It, there three p.m. Thursday. Yeah, it, it isn't. Sorry, that's kind of more what I was talking about. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, I'd rather just have twice, or, or I'd rather just have if at the same time. It's easier for us to make commitment to show up, but okay. it doesn't have to be at the same like physical time. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no I got it. Yeah, perfectly <laughs> fine. Okay, so um, is it fine if I float a doodle and you guys can you know vote for the times that you are comfortable with, and then maybe we can select the maximum one among them. Sure. Yep. Good. Um, just give me a second. So I, um, okay, good. Um, yeah, so we'll have to add that once we decide the timings, we'll add it to the Jenkins event calendar, uh, the project page, and um, this meeting. Yeah, of course, we've got to add this meeting notes uh, to the page. So, yeah, I'll do that. And I would be using this color scheme if you guys are, I've, I've just copied it from the last time's. Um, I guess it was a multi-branch uh, GitLab uh, source plugin. Okay. They, yeah, they used a kind of uh, done work in progress, not started yet. So mm -hmm. I think I have that 
already open here i was just looking at it not not open yeah but uh, i just put it at the side of the items so that i don't have to assign everything to myself so i can just uh, you know you can whenever you log into this document it's easier for you to know what's been done and what's in progress and what's not started yet so cool. once the meetings done i'll just put them uh, down um, i've given you edit access to this document this tell me if you can't edit anything um, okay. yeah cool um yeah apart from that okay so the next uh, the key point that i need to discuss is get introduced to key stakeholders and contributors in this area so as i like mentioned um we need to this is an important step of uh, the community mm -hmm. bonding period it's like getting introduced mm -hmm. to the key stakeholders yeah so i drew up this mailing list i think kristen you were i'm not too sure if you were a part of this uh, discussion when the initial project idea came out um i could uh, yeah so this was the initial discussion that happened i put it in the meeting like you can have a look um this was the one yeah we had a huge i mean a, quite a huge discussion on this um, <laughs> as to what yeah it, it's a huge thread you don't have to read all of it but uh, yeah these are kind of the um, stakeholders that were quite interested one was chris he expressed a lot of interest in this the other one was uh, manuel ramon and the third was um, i think lee yeah lee so uh, uh okay. iolex yeah so right. lee was uh, yeah uh, lee was another one so uh, there were quite a couple of stakeholders interested in this project idea um, i'm not too sure exactly um, how do we want to proceed with this do you want to send out a, a general statement in the mailing list introducing the stakeholders to the project so that uh, if interested they could just join in or you want to send out an e personalized email i'm not too sure how that goes on so if you guys could guide me on that that would be amazing yeah would it would be great to make an announcement on the jenkins developer mailing list mm -hmm. uh, you may have seen that uh, this project is already included into the jenkins roadmap um, and uh, yeah, we consider it as an important project for the jenkins community mm -hmm. so sending an announcement to the developer mailing list with introductions etc is totally reasonable uh, and you can also ping people in the developer mailing list thread which we had uh, during the initial discussion of this project sorry that's what i was thinking is like because they're already interested in the thread so they're going to be following updates and it's always good to just continue to say hey this was actually selected this is what we're working on you can join our gitter channel if you would like because that helps a lot too for the community because maybe they don't really can't attend meetings but they can provide some asynchronous feedback yeah okay Okay. Yep. Uh, cool. I'll uh, just add it here. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah. Apart from that, um, um, I get on the screen. It's all good. I am. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So. <laughs> so yeah. The next thing was uh, discuss. I'm I'm not too sure this point is as relevant now during the community bonding phase, but I seen the last year's project as well, and they discussed it during the. It was included as a project topic in the. initial meeting um, i'm not too sure how relevant it is now uh, but discuss with mentors about code reviews and pr so we issue trackers because i'm hoping that the project since the back end would be built in spring boot or java that's up for discussion still but uh, mm -hmm. yeah um, whether we should use uh, how relevant is it to discuss it now or you want to defer it for later we we'll discuss it now yeah okay cool yeah uh, So yeah, uh, tell me your. Uh, so as since I'm the student, I would be um, expected to drive this. Uh, but um, I'm I'm comfortable with using both uh, the GitHub issue tracker. I've seen a lot of discussions happening on the Jenkins mailing list as to uh, whether the GitHub. There's been a lot of discussion on using just GitHub or using uh, just Jira. I don't have very strong opinions on them. But uh, if you're using GitHub, then um, since both the code and the issues can be kept in the same place, um, I think that's a, a good idea. What do you guys think? Mm. <laughs> oh, like you might be able to help with this a little bit more because I last last year we worked with or I worked on a project and we used the Jira, and I know it's easier to consolidate everything if we're using GitHub issues, but I don't know if that's what would be preferred. Yeah, I can share my opinion, um, but yeah, I would rather prefer to let uh, mentors and uh, students uh, to share their opinions first. Yeah, Rick, just uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rick, Rick, do you have have you have you worked with like uh, the GitHub issues or the Jira? And I don't know if there's a preference. Uh, I know uh, we used uh, Jira in last uh, last uh, years, maybe 
recent years. Um, but in my opinion, GitHub uh, issue is uh, is a good choice. And uh, mm -hmm. also we can create a project in GitHub. So I think we, we maybe can try to use GitHub issue. That's where uh, we can, uh, we, we don't need to switch too many uh, system or page, just the focus on GitHub. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. If, since it is easier to track, I, yeah, I, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, GitHub issue and uh, GitHub project. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you. So I second uh, this recommendation. So uh, GitHub issues are quite convenient for related projects. Why we use uh, Jiren uh, Jenkins heavily is because uh, we need uh, to coordinate changes across multiple projects, components. And historically, GitHub was pretty weak about that. But now, um, yeah, even there, it makes sense. And for the latest project like a distribution build service, it's much easier to use GitHub issues. Um, if you want to reference something in Jenkins Jira, you st you still can do that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you just have everything uh, um, isolated in your own repository. The only thing you will need to keep in mind is that uh, you will need to somehow manage access to your project dashboard. But assuming that uh, sliding and other mentors will have right access to the repository, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. For example, what we had to do with configuration as code, we had to create mm -hmm. a project on the organization level instead of the repository level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, for this project, it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, okay. So GitHub issues, it is there. Um, yes. Uh, so I'm putting it what, what about the okay. other projects? Uh, I mean, there are, we 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 got uh, five projects in this year. Uh, if if only this project uh, use GitHub issue and GitHub project, uh, um, maybe we cannot get a full picture of the GSOC. Yeah, so I can provide you some examples. In a Windows Service Wrapper project, we have already agreed um, to move forward with GitHub issues. Um, in Jenkins X, most likely they will be using uh, GitHub issues as well. And yeah, it's highly unlikely that they will be using Jenkins Jira. Um, and for other projects, it's basically up to project contributors and the maintainers to choose. So, um, Personally, I uh, expect that uh, many projects will go forward with GitHub issues for this year. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So moving on um, to the next topic, uh, communication to org admins. What do we need? Like um, hosting new plugins, trainings, tech advisors. Uh, since Jira isn't there, so would the opinion be that we're using GitHub project boards for it now? That we're not using Jira. Uh, I have some, uh, I feel some confused about new plugins. Uh, do, uh, so do you think uh, we need to create a new pro projects or uh, new plugins or just uh, a uh, web project? I mean, not a plugin. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking since it's a distribution service, it's not going to follow the normal plugin lifecycle, right? Because it's not a plugin and won't plug into the Jenkins ecosystem, right? Yeah. So it would, yeah. It's going to be a, it's going to be a separate project. So I don't think we would, um, I'm not sure how to go about the hosting. I've included in my proposal, since it's a bit different, um, I mentioned that there are helm charts to, dis, uh, to launch services using the Jenkins infrastructure. So I'm assuming it won't follow the, this part here, so I don't guess. I'm not sure we're going to go through this uh, hosting plugin. Uh, uh, well, generally we go through this process anyway. Um, okay. Obviously, we don't apply the same checks if the repository isn't a plugin. 
So how we usually approach it uh, for new projects, you create a, a, a repository skeleton in your own repository. And then once you're ready, we host it on uh, Jenkins. So preferably to do it uh, before the end of the community bonding phase so that uh, we have all permissions and other um, areas uh, fixed uh, before you start coding. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't take long for arbitrary repository. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So uh, we'll do this. Christian, any thoughts on that? Oh, no, I think this is so everything to So okay. one, one question to you, Sladen. Uh, do you anticipate it to be a single repository or is there a chance you will need multiple repositories? Um, I'm assuming since um, because this project will entail a front end, it's, um, it's kind of a, the back end mm -hmm. would be separate from the front end. Um, mm -hmm. Initially, I was thinking that it would be two different repositories because then it's easier to pack the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS or whatever it, that we're going to use in one repo, and then the back end service in the other repo so that they are quite modular and separate. But uh, if, that's what that's what the way I was thinking about it. But um, if, if there are any other suggestions as to having a benefit of having a single repository, um, I'm up to change as well. I don't think there are uh, too many benefits in that. Because uh, whatever you do, you already have custom work packager. And custom work mm -hmm. packager uh, is going to be a part of the backend. Mm -hmm. And most likely you will have to submit some fixes or patches uh, to custom work packager during your project. Uh, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect everything to be in a single repository. And uh, yeah, it may also influence your decision about where you put uh, the project. Okay. Right, I was thinking the same thing. I mean, you can always just uh, think of mm -hmm. multiple, okay. yeah, multiple parts. You can put uh, so it together, but it might be easier for just trying to locate everything. Okay, so you're saying that uh, we'll have multiple repositories, Christine? Is no, no, I'm saying you have one repository. Okay, cool. Everything is kind of packed in there. You can have the multiple folders, like if you want to be able to separate UI code, but I don't think that it needs to be a whole other repository. Okay. At least in the beginning, because yeah. Um, yeah, we can split it later if there is strict need. Uh, but it uh, yeah, would be better not to over engineer uh, this uh, stuff right now. Okay. Yeah, plus from me, if we don't have too much benefit from separate to per uh, repository, just to keep it into keep keep them in one repository. If we just need to create two folders to separate them. Okay, cool. So, so Oliga, cool. do, do you think we need uh, to create a uh, workflow to uh, about how to host a uh, regular pro project? Um, what do you mean? Uh, knowledge transfer? Or what? I mean, uh, if if someone want to host their project uh, into uh, say org, how do they need to do? Well, uh, it's pretty much like uh, hosting plugins. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some minor differences, but you follow the same process. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, maybe we will need to update our documentation soon. We have just created a hosting team one week ago. And one of the responsibilities of hosting team would be to improve documentation, including to finally moving this hosting plugins wiki page to Jenkins IO and breaking it down uh, to developer documentation pages. Um, but uh, yeah, in principle, it's the same. And moreover, it's quite straightforward for JSOC projects mm -hmm. because all JSOC projects are already considered accepted. So it's not something we will be discussing feasibility and other things there. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. So um, I think we've discussed the hosting new plugin since it's a project we'll be 
uh, following the similar workflow. Uh, we'll get that up before the coding phase starts. Um, apart from that, yeah, the scrum board. So I guess we're, we're not going to be using, I guess last year, Oleg, the entire GSOC team, the, I mean, the GSOC projects used the Jira scrum, the Jira boards. So would, the, would they be following the same procedure this time around? Mm, or would we I don't to... think so. Uh, we will create uh, um, Jira boards for projects uh, which need that. Yeah. And other projects are welcome to follow their approach. For example, if you use GitHub project, or if Jenkins X team, they will like to have a GitHub project as well. You can just uh, stick to that project and reference it from your documentation. Uh, we will still create a Jira board for those who need that, uh, but we won't be forcing that. Okay, so Christian, any thoughts on that? Mm. Yep, I'm just, as I'm like saying, <laughs> just listening to this because I think it's very. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, what you could do, you could uh, create a, a GitHub board, maybe one for all three phases or one per phase, it's, uh, as you decide. Yeah, for phrases, so, so it, with the, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was like, is it easier to use, if you don't want to create the boards, is it easier to use tags so we could see everything that's hap like in, that's, I guess, projected? Or yeah. is, does, does GitHub allow you to do tags? <laughs> I don't, I'm um, not as familiar with the GitHub. In project. GitHub, you can use milestone for that. Okay, because I was thinking uh, that maybe it'd be easier to see everything together. Yeah, one way to use milestones so that uh, there is no cross uh, repository milestones. So okay. if you want to create advanced queries, you will be responsible uh, to manage milestones across multiple repositories. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That, mm -hmm. Then that may help things a little better. I just... Yeah. So it's okay. still not a big deal, but uh, yeah. Is it easy to move? Like, sorry, this is just be learning about the GitHub issues too. Is it easy to move things if, um, you know, we put too much work into a milestone, like just optimistically? Is it easy to move a task from, or like, from one board to the next. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Then that's. I think that was basically well, that was another thing mm -hmm. I was thinking because it's really you know you get it's very easy to get very excited about because you know, you're like oh I can do all this these things and maybe things take longer than you originally thought or it's like you you just put, just put too much and it, it's just impossible to get it done yeah. and if it's easy to translate it to the next board then I think that. We're, I just don't want to have to create work twice. It, that's what I'm trying to, yeah. work, trying to avoid. Yeah. GitHub is pretty good at that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should, should there be one board for the community bonding? Like, um, create an epic for the stuff to be done? Or could we just skip out that phase from the uh, boards? I mean, not to say skip, but um, should we include it in the uh, GitHub board? Or is that not needed? I don't, to me, I think we could, let's keep it in the doc. I don't think we'd need it because I'd just be more focused on the code. Yeah, does, okay. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. To me. Or, well, if you use um, GitHub project, in GitHub project, you can put uh, code tasks and non-code tasks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So code tasks can even have automation. So for example, GitHub issues, they can be delivered. So pull requests, pull requests can be automatically promoted between stages and whatever other things. Um, but uh, yeah, if you need, you can just add a task which is not really implying code. And you can add a task which also doesn't really get reflected on GitHub issues if you want to avoid putting tasks like write a blog post there. But, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, um, do you want to say anything or then we can move on to the next uh, topic, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so trainings, um, I mean, knowledge transfers or training sessions, I think that's up to us. Um, if I need anything regarding, um, like maybe, I think last year there was one of those training sessions that Justin took for uh, debugging in Java. So uh, it was discussed in yesterday's GSOC, I mean, yes, not yesterday's, uh, the meeting on Wednesday, that uh, there would be common, um, uh, there would be common knowledge transfer sessions like, uh, host, like creating a plugin or some sort. So I think that really is on demand. So if at all I need something that, uh, that the team could have a training session on, then I could request it. Um, otherwise that topic is really, um, is really personal, I guess. 
Yeah, I guess so. And uh, specifically in your project, uh, mm -hmm. a guide for creating plugins won't really help with your objectives. Uh, so, for example, if you want to have a code dive for custom work packager, uh, firstly, there should be already a recording somewhere. If you want to have a fresh recording together, we can organize that. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, okay, it will be my one hour of shame, but I'm really ready to <laughs> present the architecture of this component. Oh, like, yeah, the damn put your name beside it. Well, I think it would be useful for the contributors because we get contributions for custom work packager. This project was slightly abandoned by me during the last six months due to some issues non-related to technical ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now I'm fully able to contribute there and deliver patches. And if somebody else wants to contribute, I will definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So doing a code dive makes total sense. Okay, so yep, uh, maybe we could organize this. Uh, mm -hmm. so, yep, just before the community bonding maybe ends, um, while I'm preparing the design documents, so I've included a link here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a second, uh, I will uh, create a doodle because we already started doodle for another knowledge transfer. So we okay, should definitely. just uh, copy and paste for me. So do you want to have it next week uh, or yes. is it fine if we do it later? I mean, I'm, I'm up to it. I mean, as long as uh, it happens, no, don't really mind next week or this week. <sighs> well. So taking my schedule, maybe it's better to do it next week. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, say so. I do not commit uh, to do it next week. I, I will uh, send um, a little for two weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just creating that. So yeah, we, you can continue the discussion. Um, yeah, I will okay. create it, uh, share it in the chat in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Definitely. Okay, so training's done. Um, tech advisors, I'm not too sure why this uh, topic is. I've just copied it from last year's um, community bonding uh, to do list. I mean, the first meeting that they had. Sure. But uh, yeah, the tech advisors, I guess, that topic pertains to uh, stakeholders of experts in the domain. Mm -hmm. or whatever we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So last year for the multi-branch pipeline plugin for GitLab, I think it was Joseph because he was doing most of the reviewing mm -hmm. and um, uh, and that. But I guess in our case, we already have Rick or maybe customer package. Mm -hmm. If at all we're making patches, we have Oleg. So I guess those would be that. And Christian obviously will be reviewing code as we do. So yeah, just, that's right. Like, that's on your part. I'm just putting it uh, down uh, here because uh, these are the main components. I'm not too sure about the front end part here. Um, my JavaScript, my front end skills are okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I can help. Yeah, with that. I don't know if we have Felix um, as one of the um, advisors on maybe the front end part. I'm not too sure if we can arrange that. I mean, he made a couple sure. of comments to the proposal, uh, but yeah, I'm not too sure of his availability during this period. Yeah, I can't say anything specific. Mm. But right. definitely, once you have a first prototype, uh, you can uh, get feedback. Uh, because yeah, we have a lot of contributors with uh, UI UX background. Okay. By the way, I uh, put a link to Doodle for customer package at PT. Uh, you can find it in the chat. Okay, cool. thanks. Yes, uh, I think we have discussed the last uh, topic as well. Um, the new GitHub repository and the Jenkins CIO. Uh, I think Rick, you put this on, right? Uh, not sure if we should get it during the coding phase. I think that's already answered. Right? Um, it would be nice to do it before the community bonding phase ends. So, yep, I'm just um, taking this comment out since the question's already answered. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that's about all of the, um, I mean, that's about all of the topics that we have to cover in the kickoff meeting. Um, is there, okay, yeah, one more thing uh, before we move on to uh, maybe the design doc. Uh, the Zoom link, so I guess since Rick already has uh, access to the CD foundation, but we might have conflict, so, is the Zoom link going to be given to one of our mentors, like maybe Christian or Rick, and then they could have a meeting because we got to add it to the calendar. 
Yeah. So um, there are some process issues I need to figure out. Uh, by coding phase, we will uh, have access for Rick. Well, for Rick, I believe I can share it right now because he has access to CD F Zoom. Yeah, I can um, access the CD from the Zoom account and uh, also uh, access from the YouTube account. So I can upload the video. Yeah, right. Uh, so the discussion was about uh, Jenkins Zoom account because we have a second uh, Zoom account uh, which is specifically created for the Jenkins project. Because uh, there is a continuous risk when you use PDF account that you run uh, into a collision with another project. Because uh, for Jenkins, we can use Jenkins calendar and uh, yeah, you're uh, highly advised uh, to put your regular meeting there. Um, but we cannot expect CDF to do the same. So we hit multiple issues with um, CDF account being clocked. And that's why my recommendation would be to switch to another Zoom account. But uh, you can share access with you, Rick. Okay. okay. Do, I, do I need to send an email or something to request the Jenkins Zoom account? Uh, Rick, no, for you, for you, uh, it's not needed. I will just forward it to you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I plan to have official process for that, but uh, since we don't have official process, I will just uh, forward it to you in a very secure way, by the way. Okay. I, mean, I will I just send you now. Okay. <laughs> I can help uh, to add the meeting you wanted to check the calendar. Maybe you can mm -hmm. send the text yep. to me. <clears throat> yep. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so um, apart from that, uh, yeah, next step, I guess anything. Okay, so am I missing anything that you guys want to discuss um, that's necessary for a kickoff meeting? I guess I've covered almost um, everything. So anything you guys want to say or add? Any technical things that are missing? Mm -hmm. okay. So I guess the, the thing that I was thinking about is if um, you're trying to determine what framework to use and mm -hmm. figure out like Spring, Spring Boot, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know really, like do you have like a preference for anything or do you think no, that, no. like you would, okay, I was like I didn't feel like you were trying to learn like a, something new or like focus on like a Java based solution or anything, but yeah, because there's a yeah. lot of different things out there that can get a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. that was uh, that was the, when the project was announced. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next section. So, oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw the text acting. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Push it forward. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Not so <laughs> the, the next one was the design doc. Uh oh. A core design document. So I decided to go with it. Um, so that we have all of the technical details ironed out before the coding phase begins, and we don't run into any unexpected glitches or turn that. Obviously, we can change certain directions here, but yeah, sure. uh, yeah, Very the design cool. documentation. Yeah, if you want to uh, stick yeah. to this, I was just thinking that it would be good, yeah, to talk about this because that way, you know, you don't get stuck spending a lot of time during this period of time, like trying to figure yeah. out how to set things up, and then if we need to also like the technical mentor section, um, mm -hmm. it might we can always find, you know, like we have mm -hmm. ex like uh, we all have experience with different things, but it's also like you know we can get community help or like people might be interested from the perspective of, hey, you know, this was an issue that I've run into with this before. So it, it, mm -hmm. that helps. We can help find technical mentors for that too. Yeah. So, sorry, that's kind of where I was going with that one. I was like, oh, we can okay. pull in extra people or who might be interested depending on what the situation yeah. we go with. Yeah, if you need technical advisors, we have people experienced with Spring. Mm -hmm. If you want to try something new, for example, Quarkos, Quarkos has a really good uh, framework. Mm -hmm. and, well, it has bridges yeah. to Spring. It is really good. Um, and yeah, again, we have some people who are experienced. And if you want to have a mentor with experience uh, with Quarkos, I may be able to help with that. Not me personally, but uh, I know right people. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so then coming back to the question here. Um, yeah, so this was one of the discussions that we had. Initially, when the project was announced, I think 
Rick mentioned Golan because he was uh, very uh, familiar with it. But then uh, Oleg told us that uh, it might be a bit uh, like it's advisable to choose a certain language that um, then you get a lot of community feedback from, and it's easier to for code reviews and to deploy. So Spring Boot actually is yeah is is Java. We can actually have a Java based solution as well. Um, but yeah, this was this the reason we were thinking of Spring Boot was because it's just. Uh, I mean, it could easily uh, integrate with the front end, and it's it's almost Java, it's Java actually, just with annotations and just the ease of deployment. And uh, we have a lot of uh, it's easy to spin up a server and you know have a container and stuff. So that's what that's the reason I wrote the Java Spring Boot. But yeah, I'm open to suggestions before we um, yeah before we begin. So yeah, just just throw in your ideas. I'll add it to the list. Here. I don't have something to opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick. Mm, not for me. Okay, Christian. Yeah, you've already. Uh, yeah. yeah you, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, sure, I just said. <laughs> yeah. So, so you do you want us to stick? I mean, do you you were saying that um, we could rather um, move to a Java based solution or Spring Boot? Uh, Rick, you're um, I'm just also trying to think of what would be the best way to be able to keep people interested, or be able to involve the community after the summer, right? Because that's another thing is to make sure that the project doesn't just stall out, and especially since it is important to Jenkins overall, and we'll be continuing on the roadmap. So I, I just trying to think of like at most, like what would be best thing to be able to encourage usage or, or like continued development. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think it might be, and if, I don't know, to me it's like the Java. I don't. I don't know. Oleg like Rick, like if there's an opinion about what would be able to no. continue to encourage future development for this, or like to be able to, you know, Sladen's gonna knock it. <laughs> He's gonna do well over the summer. Got this awesome project, mm -hmm. and then it's like, all right, like let's get other people in here, mm -hmm. like continue yep. the good, <laughs> continue developing it, or like finding new, like, hey, let's add a new feature. What would be the best way to continue to encourage mm -hmm. people to mm -hmm. work with it? I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Main advantage of Java stack, which is not currently listed in the list, that uh, you get access to libraries and tools we have already mm -hmm. created. So, for example, custom work packager it can be used as a library, plugin installation manager tool it can be used as a library. I'm not sure whether it's really needed for this project, but it's okay. an advantage. Uh, at the same time, Go, uh, yeah, there are already some libraries for that. For example, Rick is actually uh, working on uh, a Jenkins CLI in Go, oh, cool. which also includes nice. some components. Mm -hmm. And uh, Go is also a general purpose uh, language now, which is quite popular. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the team decides uh, to choose Go, I do not think it will be a major problem. Okay. So, uh, yeah. sorry for not providing a definite answer. So as long as you do not create something in white space, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely. Okay. Yep. Uh, so something in the community, uh, something to encourage future developers. Um, continue maintenance, I guess. So, um, so are we going to make a decision right now? As we define the design document, we're going to move on with it, or are we like? I don't know if we need, it or we just, I just I think it's something to keep in mind. I don't know if we need to, we can go through the design document and pick a, pick something later. I don't know. Okay, pick something later. I don't want to hold this up like sitting over here to like uh, working on the fine particularities, particularities of language yep. for, for our first meeting. So. Okay. I just think it's something we should speak in just to remember. It's like, all right, yeah, it's like it's really fun to learn something. Too. Yeah, like, like I said, don't like choose my space. Okay, cool. Yeah, just yeah, that's, that's fine. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, we'll. Um, I think Rick, or do you have anything to say on this? Because uh, you were the initial initiator mm -hmm. for this. So, do you have any strong opinions on what kind of stack we should pick or move on? Mm. I think uh, Java. Tag is a uh, pretty uh, convenient uh, language. Uh, I agree with your proposal about uh, 
Apologies, this is tech stack. So yeah, um, we can maybe decide, um, yeah, as in when we uh, finalize the technical details, we could uh, come up with maybe Java. It's, it's the similar thing. So as Oleg suggested, if we use Java, then we have the liberty of using some of the most um, developed libraries and uh, uh, tools. Yeah, so we can stick with that. Uh, yeah, so uh, apart from that, so I, I'm not just, I've just started the design document, obviously. So the next steps would be to, uh, maybe uh, as we decide on the next meeting slots, uh, we could finalize and tune this design document to reflect most of the work that we are uh, going to be doing over the coming, I mean, coming weeks till the end of the community bonding. If at all the design document gets over early, maybe we can start type for, uh, for the first stage. So yeah, I think that that's the next step. Any other next steps or anything you want me to discuss before we uh, finish it? Because uh, we can move on to the details in the next meeting. So, yep, anything else? Uh, about the front end, uh, maybe we, we need to consider the uh, localization for the UI stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, localization in the sense? Um, I didn't get you. Uh, I mean, um, uh, we we should to support multi language from the UN. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, multi language. Okay, yeah, yep, cool. Yeah, that's a uh, another thing that we need to consider because the, the initial problem is getting the UI generated, as we, um, as Oleg suggested in previous meetings that we've had on the uh, the doc, uh, the CDS. Um, we still don't exactly know exactly from where exactly we're going to get all of the fields. So we could create skeletons and maps. So once we actually have that, we can, um, you know, uh, have the localization done. So uh, I'll add that point since you mentioned um, the localization of uh, the UI, right? Um, that's one field. And that's the detail. Yes. That's you want. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just added a few components. So it'll have the user interface, obviously, and the back service. So as I mentioned in the readme, we'll have a generation of a Docker file, which I hadn't included in my proposal initially. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll have that now. Um, uh, the generation of the YAML file, the Docker file, the var package, and the desired storage of configuration to get up the policy. Uh, those are the main user stories. Um, apart from that, uh, as and when the design documents get fixed, um, yeah, we could just re keep refining it till the the project uh, community bonding ends. Yep. Anything else to add before we before we wrap it up? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Cool then. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for the time. I'll be sharing the doodle for the next uh, meeting slots, and you guys can choose. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Thanks everyone for the time. Really appreciate it. Cheers, gentlemen. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. See y'all. Bye.